Hello. Our Pentecost celebration today begins with the 9th century Gregorian chant, Veni Creatur Spiritus. This morning you will hear two versions of this hymn, first as an organ prelude and second as our gathering hymn. In medieval times, the singing of this hymn was generally marked with special dignity by the ringing of bells, the use of incense, of lights, of the best vestments, and of course, the color red. The use of this hymn in the services at Pentecost can be traced back to the 10th century AD. Published in 59 hymnals, it is among the most widely used hymns in the church. The first version we will hear, today's organ prelude, entitled Fanfares to the Tongues of Fire, was composed by Larry King in 1978. And not the Larry King you might be thinking of, not the political talk show host. The piece was commissioned by the Riverside Church in New York City and carries the subtitle from Acts chapter 2. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. After the prelude, join me in singing this powerful Pentecost hymn, number 577 in our hymnal, Creator Spirit, Heavenly Dove.
Welcome to worship today. We are entering into the season of Pentecost. This is the longest season in our Christian year, and it is radiant with curiosities and promises of new life. And so we may celebrate that we, like the ancestors, have received the Holy Spirit, and that we too are sent out to proclaim God's redeeming love to all the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. And as we do, we may remain seated or kneel or stand or however we're able on this day. Most merciful God, we confess we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your holy ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you through the Holy Spirit and may Jesus Christ always live in your hearts by faith. Amen. On this day, we celebrate that we are beloved. We'll celebrate with hymns of praise and gather around sacred words to learn their blessings for us still generations later. We will rejoice in the resurrection and hearing this good news, proclaim God's faithfulness to us. In Thanksgiving, we may make the sign of the cross first marked upon us at our holy baptism, joining ourselves to Christ in the waters of baptism as we are raised with him to new life again and again. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism and the waters of life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the Holy Communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, always. Creator Spirit, heavenly Dove, descend upon us from above with grace as manifold restore your creatures as they were before to you. gift of God most high, true fount of life, the fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. In you with graces sevenfold, we God 
God's almighty hand behold, while you with tongues of fire proclaim to all the world God's holy name. Your light to every sense impart, and shed your love in every heart, your own unfailing might supply to strengthen our infirmity. Keep far from us our cruel foe, and peace from your own hand bestow. Upheld by you, our strength and guide, no evil can our steps betide. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you of both to be but one, that through the ages all along your praise may be our endless song. Praise to O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that same Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
In today's Holy Word, St. Paul is helping the Corinthians understand the relationship between our God-given unity and Spirit-created diversity. The Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same Spirit has given them to each person for the common good. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Holy Word, Holy Wisdom. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Scriptures from the Book of Acts 2, 1 through 21. An Introduction. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after the Passover. In this passage, Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out on the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for a festival. Filled with the Spirit, then, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. Here is the sacred story according to Luke. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard others speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking 
about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, saying, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel, saying, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A message for children and other curious souls. Good morning, everyone. I am wearing red today. Do you know why? This is the festival of Pentecost. What is Pentecost? It's a celebration story and a promise from God that God will come to help people like Jesus. In our holy story today, Jesus has gone to heaven and his people are afraid. They're worried that they will be alone. So God sends them curious presents. And the presents are fire, wind, and of course, love. God sends the Holy Spirit to be with them and to us so that we are never alone, even when we are feeling worried. The Holy Spirit was always with God and with all the people, but we could not see her until Pentecost Day. In this holy story, Jesus also tells us about breathing. We talked last time about finding peace in our heart by using our breath. We need to breathe in order to live. And it's especially important now to be careful and to wear our masks or whatever it is that our parents has prepared for us or outside. Someday we won't wear these masks anymore, but for now we do. Breathing is a really good thing for us. I wonder how you breathe, through your mouth, or through your nose, or through your gills? Oh, no, that's fish only. Just our nose and our mouth. Breathing feeds our heart, it feeds our brain, it feeds our our joy. Breathing helps us to run fast and jump high. And we can breathe slowly too to help us relax when we feel worried. We can <sighs> slowly and deeply. So breathing is really important, not just for people, but also for our pets and even our plants. And you might notice if you're outside that you see that the clouds breathe across the sky. Well, today we hear about a curious being called the Holy Spirit. 
And did you know that when we breathe, the Holy Spirit breathes with us too and is part of our life. So today, let's say hello to the Holy Spirit who came on this day, who is always listening to how to help us, how to help you, how to help me, and say thank you, Spirit, for showing us your good and loving ways. You're always with us. Help us to breathe in your love, Holy Spirit. Help us breathe out blessings for others with our words and our actions. Whenever we feel worried or lonely or upset, just ask the Holy Spirit to be with you and she is always as close as right here. When we feel our breath, we are reminded the Spirit is with me as close as my breath inside me. You too. Let us pray. Thank you, God the Father, Jesus our Savior, and Holy Spirit our companion for always being with us as close as our heartbeat in every breath we take, helping us and helping us to help others in all times and places. Amen. In our worship today, we celebrate the arrival of the Holy Spirit as described in the book of Acts. The ancestors meet the Shekinah, the feminine aspect of the Holy Trinity, who arrives in rushing wind and fiery flame, bearing God's presence to all people. This same Holy Spirit continues with us too, now in our life. And maybe if noticed a powerful presence among us and even within us. The Holy Spirit gathered the ancestors and still gathers us now, day by day, week by week, across our whole life, noticed or unnoticed. In our holy story today, in the Acts of the Apostles, there is a surprising situation. Many are gathered for a festival and suddenly many are speaking in new ways, a multitude of languages are emerging from a homogenous group. How strange, how curious. What does this mean? It means that the Holy Trio, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is up to something new. God through the Holy Spirit fosters diversity among us with new talents and new treasures and diverse manners of expression in our prayers and in our ministries even today. There's an old phrase which says, you have been blessed to be a blessing. You have been blessed to be a blessing. In the gospel today, Jesus, via the Holy Spirit now, reminds the fearful disciples who are blessed to be a blessing. And their mission is the same as is ours, but the expression of their mission will blossom in new ways, as well as new challenges. And this is also true for St. John. The expression of our mission will blossom in new ways, as well as new challenges. The Holy Spirit empowered them and us to lead forward into new ways, new visions, partnerships with the blessing of God and the accompaniment of the Holy Spirit with you in all these things. The mission of Christ was put into the hands of the ancestors who leaves it in our hands now. For them, how exciting, terrifying, curious, and life-changing that experience 
was. And yet the Holy Spirit promised to sustain them and give them what they needed, the gifts to lead, and the ability to bless others and themselves. This Holy Spirit grants us this same blessing power. Do you know this? Are you wondering, how may you be a blessing? Are you not sure where to start? Are you afraid to fail? Yes and yes and yes for all of us. Paul's witness today to the community in Corinth may remind us, even when we feel that we have no talents or no gifts of spirit to offer, we do. We do. How might we discover that? How might we discover that we do have talents or gifts of spirit to share among one another in community, friend or stranger, and to be shared with you and received? In prayer, in listening, in watching for the spirit for that, what we call the holy nudge, into a new direction or, or a restriction in the way that we thought we should go. The Holy Spirit is always guiding, redirecting, shepherding us into the purpose that God has planned for us, often very different than what we had planned, yet it always turns out well. So where do we begin in this process of blessed to be a blessing? We do it in the same way the ancestors did, through daily prayer, through wondering conversations with others, to be honest and ask ourselves in our life, in our church, in our relationships, in our community, what is happening among us? Where are we failing? Or maybe ending something? And where are we blossoming? When we listen for the Spirit in these questions, we may receive the holy power of imagination and creativity which is able to see and create things that just sometimes seem out of our grasp, but they're not. But what about the part also, like the disciples, where we were not wishing for a spiritual adventure. We're not seeking for changes that God seeks in us. We're not seeking for God to direct our life in a different direction or our relationships. We may not seek to change the church with or without God's help. Yes, we all feel that way sometimes. And yet I'm sure in their honest moments, the first leaders, the apostles, and all those followers felt the very same way. So what do we do then? We decide to go our own way or we risk going the holy way. Following the Holy Spirit season by season as the ancestors did and so may we. Some churches are helped to connect with and remember the Holy Spirit in the burning of incense or candles and prayers the light of fire warms us and comforts us in the dark. The fire can destroy and fire can also heal. I was thinking this week um, about years ago when I was with my family in California on a trip to Yosemite. And on the way out, I saw a great valley 
that had been destroyed by fire. And yet with time and attention, green and verdant life was returning to the land among the ashes and the brokenness. Life was coming back in a stronger expression than had even been there before. Natural fire may destroy something forever or just for a season. And the small fires of our personal journeys, of our faith, may fuel our endings and our beginnings too. The fire in our prayers and listening to where God may be granting us new life or a new perspective. New pathways and holy life together where one day you may find that wished or unwished for it, that you have been blessed to be a blessing. Maybe your blessing will come to you or your family or your church, your health or your vocation, or perhaps the simple gift of joy and peace. What is our fire at St. John? Is it in our joyful worship? Is it in our fellowship? Is it in the spirit and the spirituality that we share? Where is the fire, the holy fire at St. John? And where is the fire in our community relationships? And what has been broken? And what has burned away in this church? Where may those ashes be blessed and put to rest? Where may new seeds be planted with care? What needs replanting or watering or simply tending? And where does the Holy Spirit stand by your side now, whispering like the angels who whisper over every blade of grass saying, grow, grow. Never forget, at the dawn of time, God's spirit hovered over empty places, breathing life into where there was no life, except for the infinity of darkness, until the Holy Trinity called forth water and then light and called forth the first day, the first step in a new beginning. Amen. Yes, every time.
affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us gather our prayers for our loved ones, our neighbors, our world, and ourselves. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we call upon our spirit of unity, giving thanks for our work at home and in the world. Activate the diverse gifts present in our church so that we reveal your love in, for all people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, rainstorms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal all of your creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to disease or air pollution or police brutality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our guiding way, we call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Grant each of us a heart for justice and compassion for others, friend or stranger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our great healer, we call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, recovery centers, EMTs, and ambulance drivers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who serve others and are frightened, in danger, or weary. Send them comfort, especially those we remember now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy Mother of God, we call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace as we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do we pray today, aloud or in the silence of our hearts? <clears throat> we call on your spirit of hope 
as you have led your saints in all times and places. Stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. May we share that peace now with those who are with us today. And if we are alone on this day, let us share peace into our own heart for ourselves. Let us gather into our hearts and minds those who are not with us today, whom we love. And let us send peace from us to their heart. Let us gather into our hearts and minds those with whom we have disagreement or discord and send them peace as Christ would have us do. Let us gather into our hearts and minds the peace that Christ sends to you now. Let us consider the gifts that we have received from the generosity of God. Gifts of spirit, good health, time and talent, teaching, caring for others, finances, strength, wisdom. Let us consider how we may share these gifts that were bestowed upon us by God to tend wisely Share generously in God's name. Thank you, creator of all things, for creating us and blessing us with all that we need. Show us how our gifts may bless others and show us how to be humble and grateful when another shares their blessings with us. Amen. We are in a season of fasting from receiving communion due to safety restrictions, yet we are still held fast with communion that we have received and prayerfully remember now. Let us take a moment to remember when bread has been put into our hands with care and when the wine has been brought to our lips. Let us pray. O oh Jesus, we remember you. In the bread and in the wine and in our spirit, will you remain with us in all circumstances? And we pray to you now in the translation we know best. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go back out into the world in the week ahead of us, may we receive this blessing for the journey. May God bless you and keep you. May the face of God shine upon you with grace and with mercy and grant you true peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace now and serve the Lord where he may be found. Amen. <laughs>